everyone, welcome in. My name is Detox. I'm mostly known for creating content for a game called Star Citizen uh, on my main channel on YouTube and on Twitch. But you are now here on my second channel at Detox's Lab, where I cover other games across a variety of genres, mostly with a sci-fi focus, including Falling Frontier, obviously, and Dune Awakening, uh, upcoming MMO set in the Dune universe. Falling Frontier, Todd Darcy has just dropped the new Falling Frontier trailer. It's been nearly a year since the last one came out, so I'm very excited to check this out right now. I've already made a video, everything you need to know about Falling Frontier um, over here. I'm gonna put the link up. I'll put the link down below as well. So it's been about a year since we got a new trailer from Falling Frontier. We're gonna watch that now. Buckle in, let's break this thing down. Let's see what uh, see what the, the, the trailer's showing off. Todd Darcy is the solo developer for Falling Frontier and he's been working on this for a very long time. Uh, I know he's very excited to show it off. So without further ado, let's take a look. The Hannibal reports action over Iapetus. MRN headquarters, Martian headquarters, okay? Obviously, Phobos, Mars. This is going to be a cinematics heavy trailer by the looks of it, and it looks very cool. Planetary shipyard. Ships. I think these are similar to the ones that you will uh, you'll be able to control how you feel when you're like collecting things, mining things. A little bit like Argo's from Star Citizen. Mm, there she is. Hanno, possibly? Might be the Hanno ship, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of new ships now that follow similar design language to the Hanno. Sick. So that's how they build from planetary shipyards. Yeah, you see there's a there's a couple of different ships there. So far, I, I think we've only seen we've only seen sort of ships launching from Space Dock, but that's totally different design I haven't seen yet, apart from some of the images that have come out from Todd and Falling Frontier, some of the stuff on Steam. See, I think that's a Hanno. I think that's a Hanno as well. I don't know. Yeah, that's a totally different design we haven't seen yet. Oh, so cool, man. It's just so cool. I love the designs of these ships. Just the aesthetic of the game, the cinematic so far. Mm, it's just so good. It's perfect. And we're moving into some gameplay now. Excellent. Ship completed. The TDF Vermont has been completed at en Enceladus Shipyards? Is that what we just saw? New operation, investigate possible enemy activity in the Saturn sector. Titan Colony, currently orbiting Titan Colony. Is this a construction ship? Todd has, you know, Todd continues just to to create the cleanest UI for any RTS Roger I've seen. Materials are being offloaded and prepped for distribution. Materials being offloaded. Yep, that's like a construction ship then. My goodness, this is looking cleaner and smoother than ever. Oh man. Okay. Wow. So what? Uh, let's wait and see what happens here. But is this sort of like the worker ships unloading the materials they need to construct uh, 
a shipyard, maybe an orbital station here. You gotta love the pace of this game. You know, they're, uh, the map is huge. The maps are gonna be huge. Play space is gonna be huge. You can travel everywhere at sublight speeds and take you absolutely forever. But you can do it if you want to, you know? The, the game is not rushing you through. It's kind of like sitting you back, allowing you to take in the fidelity, the detail, the aesthetic of this game. And then obviously when, you know, when combat happens and when things start heating up and when you start having to kind of run and control this large sprawling empire of of ships and logistics. The pace picks up, you know? Right now you just get that lovely, smooth, slow sort of pace to the game, which I love so far. Okay, so here we go, Ford Observer. This is, uh, we haven't seen a screen like this yet. Template screen, so, this is a shipbuilder screen now. Looks like he's updated the shipbuilder screen. The Berwick Frigate, 130 meters long. Templates, so depending on, you know, obviously depending on how you want to outfit your ships, you can create templates, slap them on. Very cool. I don't think we've seen that yet. Looks new to me. In here, you can see the, some of the ship components um, showed off here, which is interesting. I actually seen an image of this already. Um, this section, it says, so in terms of the components here, we have a standard bridge. So the default bridge as per the design spec. So the bridge that comes with the ship, obviously standard crew quarters, increased storage, improved sensors, improved engines, increased range jump drives. So this is the current core components on the Boeck frigate. So what is increased storage? A larger storage unit that houses more food. Interesting. So um, food, very important in Falling Frontier. Food would allow you to uh, travel long distances. It's, it's, it keeps your crew sustained. You run out of food, your crew dies. Your ship is, you know, it's, it's, it's stranded. It's, it's, it's empty. The crew are dead. It's, it's event horizon all over again. Um, so food is very important. Having increased storage means this ship can probably stay out in the field longer, go into deeper space, um, running missions and uh, doing your bidding as the commander here in Falling Frontier. Improved sensors, increased scanning capabilities, very important. Um, hmm. Not, can't recall how scanning is is working with ships, unless this is a, a, a this is a this kind of acts a little bit like the probes we've seen. Um, some of the sort of stationary sensors we've seen so far that are coming to Falling Frontier, which sort of you can actively scan and detect uh, enemy objects or, or anomalies on the horizon or sort of passively detect them. I wonder if this sort of improves the passive detection abilities of the ship. Improved engines. Improved engines allow for higher top speeds. Interesting. So, hmm. I wonder if this is sort of a fast... It's a Ford Observer, right? It says it's a Ford Observer, so probably going to be a scout ship um, designed to stay out in the field longer, patrol large areas of space with improved scanners, increased food storage, and fast engines. Get away from threats, move to, uh, move to scan other threats that it detects on the fringes. If it needs to get like a, a, a better reading on something, you can move it closer to that mark quicker just notice that improved engines is spelt incorrectly todd todd that's gonna really bug you now isn't it sorry uh i'm probably not the first person to let you know that increased range jump drive mid-range jump drive that increases the range of the ship so yeah this is most definitely a ford observer as the uh the class or as the as the name suggests we got our resources down here credits manpower fuel and uh, ore? Minerals, I think that one is. Oh, wow. Okay, so you... You open up the category, engine, sensors, bridge, and then you have subcategories. Subcategories to alter the 
to alter the uh, the design, alter the you know the stats, the capabilities of that category. So we've stopped it here on optional editions here. Optional, okay. Empty optional module on the Boic rescue hangar. Hangar that enables search and rescue operations. Mines? This thing can lay mines as well. I think you're going to see that a lot in Falling Frontier. Ships have a lot of capabilities. You know, they're not highly... I don't think ships in Falling Frontier are like your classic RTS, where they're going to be highly specialized, only good at doing one or two roles. They're probably going to be able to encompass multiple roles, have multiple um, elements of utility to them, so that, you know, there's sort of like a, a crossover across all the different ships. Obviously, certain ships are going to be better at doing certain things, but I think in general, a lot of these can be quite autonomous, capable of carrying out multiple different tasks. So you already saw that this one can actually have a um, rescue hangar, which means, uh, I'm assuming, small ships can 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 be can station station within the ship and if you come across any escape pods any of your ships that have been destroyed or wrecked in falling frontier your crew can board escape pods and get out and survive to live to fight another day assuming you can rescue them so if the ford observer is out on a deep space patrol mission and it can intercept some of your escape pods with a rescue hangar they could essentially i'm assuming this is what this means they could go out collect the people in the escape pods and bring them back to the frigate super cool targeting system this is another one allows the berwick to act as a spotter interesting so i'm assuming Acting as a spotter, a targeting system, this is going to allow this, allow the Berwick class to essentially provide a, uh, almost exactly as it says, a Ford Observer, give you a uh, reveal, essentially like the fog of war of units further away outside of the normal range of other ships, so that you can target them at longer range. This is, this is purely, I'm reacting to this. Uh, first time I've seen it, guys, so we are uh, speculating. We're speculating here. I am going to be making a, a bigger deep dive into this trailer and some other footage as well, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. I might be getting some exclusive footage, some exclusive gameplay footage to cover and break down for you guys. But this, like I said, this is a react. We're just kind of taking it as it comes. Ford firing vertical launch system. Boic class 3 weapons. Oh, look at that turret. Okay, switching out the turrets. This customization screen is very good. It's a, it's a lot better than the previous one that we saw. You'll see that in my other video. Everything you need to know about Falling Frontier. You'll see how it used to look. This is just another step up. Todd is killing it with the UI for this game. It's so clean. Scott Buckley, by the way, for the music. And the music is also incredible for Falling Frontier. It's like the cherry on top. Just can't wait to play this damn thing. I mean, has been delayed. It has been delayed till 2025. We haven't got our actual release date yet, unless this one has release date in it. I'd be surprised, but uh, I just realized we've moved to another ship. Okay, uh, sorry, I got carried away. So we actually moved from the Ford Observer there. And it looks like he's got a list of active ships. Uh, docked vessels. Ah, so this is... Is this like a, the mothership here? Uh, Cuban... Dubin's Rise? Is that on the planet? Can't quite tell. I think it's on the planet. So we have the Ford Observer here, the Boic class frigate. If you look down here, it says docked vessels. We've got the Coventry fig frigate, we've got the Boic, and then there's two other vessels that we're going to go through right now. That's the Coventry frigate, the, a picket frigate class. Looking awesome, 145 meters, slightly bigger than the uh, the Ford Observer, the, the, the Boic class. This definitely looks like more of a combat-oriented ship. Main weapons, four class three cannons. Close in weapon systems, class two PDCs, point defense, so shooting down incoming missiles. Each. So there's a railgun equipped there now as well. He's just put on a railgun. That's less explosive damage with greater armor penetration, as you'd expect 
from a railgun. Super cool. Uh, Coventry Class 3 missile launchers. And obviously the cannons. Less armor penetration with the advantage of... I missed it. Here's the scout frigate. So, 147 meters. Bigger than the Ford Observer. Interesting. I'm assuming this one it would essentially have less range. Smaller ship, less... Uh, bigger... No, it's bigger, isn't it? Hmm. Scout frigate and the, the Ford Observer. Like I said, there's definitely some crossover with classes. I don't think ships are too pigeonholed. Thrusters that provide faster turning in combat, optional. I don't know if you could attach that to the other ship. But maybe the Scout is a little bit more maneuverable. But since it's bigger... Hmm. Stealth Frigate here. Ooh. Fast lane frigate, 138 meters. Interesting, a stealth frigate. Drive si signature countermeasures as part of its optional packages. Cruise missile tubes. Long range missiles can be linked with a Ford Observer. There you go. So you have the Observer ship that we talked about earlier sitting, um, sitting in the fleet, providing a intel, providing um, targets of ships much further away. This cruise missile fired from a stealth frigate to just come out of the black and absolutely ruin your day, depending on whatever it's it's shooting at. Increased range jump drive on here as well. Fast lane, class three railgun, and class another class three railgun, two railguns on this baby. Scary, scary. And I'm assuming this thing is going to have a much uh, a much lower signature, be much harder to detect with probes and Ford observers, I imagine. So stealth ship, first time we've seen a stealth ship. First time we've seen many of these ships, actually. Huh, optional drone bay, capable of carrying support drones. I'm assuming support drones for the, the act of repairing the ship. Superficial damage, I'm not sure. That's the Vermont, the Berwick frigate. Hmm, and there's the map. So this this is um, most likely part of the campaign. For those who don't know, the first in the early access release that we get for Falling Frontier, we are getting Act One of the campaign, and that is what Todd is going to use for uh, you know feedback, how the game plays, how the game feels, and also he's I think he's aiming to release a scenario creator at some point in the access after that. So uh, what we're seeing here it says Might of Mars gameplay trailer. So I'm assuming Might of Mars is one of the acts in the campaign. Yeah, so that's what we're seeing here. This obviously part of the the campaign is taking place around Saturn. And this is the star map. Supply destination coming online. Looking cleaner than ever once again. Todd killing it with the minimalistic coming online. UI here. Mining okay, so these are the mining stations that he has up and running in the area. You look up here as well, we have uh, 30,000 credits, 20,000 uh, manpower. Manpower is very important. It's what you need to literally operate your empire, run ships, um, run stations. And it's all physicalized. So if you want to move people from place to place, they need to actually move on ships. So if you want to re reinforce a ship that's lost a lot of crew, you've got to go dock the ship at a station and Insta reinstate new crew, put new crew on board to keep it operating at full efficiency. Oh! Is that a stealth ship? No, it's a wormhole! Wait, what? This is the new jump effect? 
Oh, 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 oh. wow. Ship locked in for conduit travel. Conduit travel. Conduit travel. Is this a uh, player made? FTL fuzz and light jump incoming. TDF York coming out from the other side. Interesting. Goodness me, Todd. What are you doing to us, man? That is so cool. That is very cool. <sighs> Slightly different effect to what we had before with the with the jumps. Awesome. Patrol path set up. Like it, like it. Very good. It's like a shift click, standard stuff. That jump was different. Different jump effect, different, um, I don't know if Todd's called them conduits before, but you heard the captain say, preparing for conduit jump or something. So it sounds almost like that, that was like a player, like a player created jump point or something, but, uh, I don't think so. I think that's just maybe the terminology and the lore Todd is going for with the faster than light jump. Sweet. Mining ships is breaking up the rocks, fracturing it, and sends out the, uh, the mining ships, the, 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 the smaller mining drones, to go and start grabbing the good stuff. Wow. Once again, this is a step up in visual fidelity, clarity, aesthetics. This is just so gorgeous, man. I, you know, I come from a StarCraft 2 background heavily when it comes to RTS, super fast paced, high APM. I just can't wait to just sit back and just sink into this game and be immersed, you know? The pace is a, is a breath of fresh air. Rear colony on the moon. Huh, what's this? Select location for probe. Ah, so you're sending off a probe on the station. You get a number of probes for every station. Wow, so this is the new probe placement. Clean. Is that it? Did he send the probe? Oh, they go. oh, we got an engagement. One of the new Boic, Boic frigates. And the other one. Oof, that ship's just been ripped in half. What? Has it been ripped in half? Oh no, 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 sorry, it's the, uh... There's the shadow covering... A piece of the ship looked like it just been broken in half after receiving that cannon hit. What's this? Is this a coll- This is a- This is like a... The AI sort of subverting a collision course or something? Preparing the broadside? What's happening here? Very cool, you can see the, the ships moving in and out the dark side of that planetary body. Are they both disabled? This one's... This one's lost its engines. This one is just drifting now. And, and so is this one, I think. I think we might have to go back and actually look at that engagement really quick. What happened there? I mean, what are we looking at? We've got a uh, TDF Fitzroy. Oh, it's the Hanno. It's a Hanno destroyer. Uh, this thing's going to kick these guys' asses, I think. I don't think the other one's a Hanno. I think the Hanno is the big boy. That is a destroyer class. I think we've got a Berwick, which is obviously the Ford Observer class. And then this... This one was... Uh, 
I don't know what that one was. I can't remember. It's, yeah, we'll see. So he hits him with a few shots from the cannon. Very quickly disables them, which e they were either heavily damaged already, or those were critical hits, which are possible. You can get some critical hits. They're very rare, they're very hard to do. But you can score critical hits against other ships in the game. I think the railgun is more likely to cause critical hits due to its ability to sort of penetrate armor and hit critical systems. I don't know. Uh, cannons, you know, they're more sort of AoE damage. Damage to the surrounding area that, that gets hit. Damage to the hull. Surface targets locked in. Missiles away. I think uh, surface targets, or is he going to finish off this ship? That's surface targets. Okay, so these guys were defending their colony's planet side, and this ship is committing genocide, apparently. <laughs> Jesus. This is Gulliver Base. Permission granted. Beric class frigate Sirtis and Coventry class frigate Karatha have been dispatched to assist. Rendezvous commandments to follow in data packet. Good hunting. Out. Gulliver Base, this is Hannibal. Rendezvous coordinates received. Can you confirm FTL approval is granted? Over. Woo! Wow. Super cool. Man, that was a tasty look. Worth the wait. That's, it's been, like I said, uh, May last year was the last release uh, oh, we got of anything from Folding Frontier from Todd. Um, again, Folding Frontier, single man dev team. He's now got some artists on board. Um, they, obviously, there, there's a composer, Scott Buckley, doing the, the fantastic soundtrack. And uh, it's been published by Hooded Horse, which are an awesome, awesome publisher. They're, they're, they're covering some great games at the moment. They're killing it with their RTS coverage. Starter Fox Studios. Um, guys, Falling Frontier, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I've been following this game for so long. I'm so excited for it. Um, I am an RTS fan, and this is like, this is like a, it's it's, it's an RTS that sort of scratches so many different itches. It's got a video, uh, or everything you need to know about Falling Frontier, which is still relevant, although obviously we have some new information. I'm going to break down some of this new stuff that comes out, I believe. There may be some exclusive footage coming my way, uh, which I'm looking forward to. But uh, if you like the sound of that, if you, if you want to know more about Falling Frontier and, and get more updates on the game, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.